Sure, thank you, and thank you for choosing Channel 3 this Thursday morning. I'm Melissa Borden. And I'm John McMahon. National College Decision Day is less than a week away on May 1st. And for the majority of colleges, that's the deadline for accepted students to make their final pick of where they'll go to pursue their degree. And that's a process that's changed drastically over the years. Channel 3's Melissa Cooney joins us live on the University of Vermont campus with how things have changed. Melissa, good morning. Good morning, Alyssa and John. Well, applying to college is much different today than when it was 20 years ago, 10 years ago, or even five years ago. I spoke with a college counselor who noted with more binding decision options and an ever-changing online landscape, the process is always evolving. Applying to colleges starts well before 12th grade. I took the ACT, uh, started testing and trying to get a sense of where I wanted to go. And then over the summer, junior year into senior year, I wrote like just a million essays, uh, drafts for like your main common app essay. Maria Lambert was accepted into her dream school, Northwestern University. She applied early decision, an option that binds a student's commitment upon their acceptance. Ultimately, I felt like if I, yeah, I wanted a chance to, to get in, I had to pick one and apply early. Beyond early decision, high school seniors are faced with a number of other options when applying. Early decision two is a binding admission program with a later deadline. Early action is a non-binding plan that offers an early admission response. And then there's regular decision, the more traditional option. These schools are typically filling 60% of their classes through the early decision rounds. So that is something to consider. Do you need to figure out that it's gonna work for you financially before you apply? Alice Lisa Rogg is a private college counselor who also counsels at the Lake Champlain Waldorf School, helping roughly 35 students a year. She says half her students applied early decision this year. A difference she's noticed is the common application, allowing one application to be sent to dozens of schools. And in a post-COVID world, schools are taking advantage of online tours and outreach. They've just broadened their reach. I think the fact that Certainly with so many schools, the vast majority test optional, that absolutely increased the number of applications. Yeah. Lisa Rogg encourages students to still take standardized exams, even if their colleges are test optional, as some slowly revert back to requiring scores. Additionally, she notes it appears exam scores for colleges seem higher because students with better scores are more likely to submit. It's a process that's tricky to navigate, especially with financial considerations too. There are a lot of tools to help students. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's so fraught with anxiety, and I think, again, you know, with everything on social media and so on, that's something that I really try to help students protect themselves from and just, you know, focus on what they've got to do. And for fellow high schoolers, Lambert says she's learned everyone's story is different, and it's important for students to support one another through a complicated process. You don't really know why someone gets in and why someone doesn't, or why someone picks a certain school or a different one, and there's a million reasons, so trying to distance yourself from any kind of like arbitrary judgment. And colleges still are considering things like your GPA or the rigor of your curriculum. And other factors could come into play like legacy and ability to pay are some things that may or may not factor into your decision. Live in Burlington, Melissa Cooney, Channel for This Morning.